Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, well for the past couple hours I've been routing around inside of somebody's basement looking for treasures in antiques and collectibles, whatever else I can find. Um, so I just got done an estate clear out and I weaved my way through and picked out a few little treasures. The back seat um, has some stuff in it, but we're going to open up the trunk and uh, bring the stuff inside the store, which is right there, <laughs> because uh, I don't want to be driving around with a whole bunch of stuff in the back of the car. So let's uh, get it unpacked and I'll show you exactly what came through today. All right, pretty full load today. There's all kinds of goodies back here. And that's the thing, when you go to someone's house, you never know exactly what you're going to find. But um, let's pack this stuff in. I'll see if Sean wants to give me a hand bringing it in, and then we'll, uh, we'll lay it out and kind of go through it. Everything is in. I've got some bins, some boxes, and various sorts of things here that we brought back from the house. Um, first thing I'm going to look at is this. This funny little case it can actually be a really handy tool if you've not seen one before. This is a portable tube tester. Well, if you have old radios like I've got up there um, and you don't know if they're working or not, you can put your tube in and test it and it'll tell you whether basically it's good or bad and what, what level it's at. So pretty handy little device. I bought it uh, hoping that I could use it for testing tubes. I may end up putting it up for sale because there are a lot of people that do radio repair. But uh, if I ever have to repair my own radios, it might actually be kind of a anything to have around. So tube tester, that came in. The reason I bought this photo was twofold. One, it uh, is related to the Hudson's Bay Company. There's lots of collectors for HBC. You can see HBC. And it's the Hudson's Bay Company, joy of the season. So it looks like they had a choir. And um, what's really neat though, is that this was played live on the radio. And at that time, of course, before TV, you can see the uh, CFRN that's our local radio station, TV station here, that they were there live at the time recording everything and getting it out on the air. So it was broadcast to the public. This is a picture from that event. And, um, you know, it's in an older frame, but a neat piece of uh, radio history and a neat piece of retail history having the Hudson's Bay Connection, which is one of the oldest North American retail stores founded in the 1600s, and it's still going today. This one's neat. I almost feel bad because it's still in the Christmas wrapping paper from way back when. It's like a Christmas gift that stayed in its box. But it's uh, more a religious icon of Mary. And probably, let's see, well, at the time it was sold was $50 made in Italy. And that is probably a, you know, 1950s or 60s piece. That would have been quite expensive at the time. $50 for a piece like that would have been you know, the equivalent of several hundred today. So somebody must have really wanted that. Um, I see it marked on the back with the copyright logos on it, but that's kind of a unique piece. We'll set that down there. See what else is in that box. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Some cloth and so forth. Oh, there's some candlesticks. Let's see what's in here. Feels like okay. That's a lamp base. Bring that over here and set it down out of the way. Maybe the if I'm lucky, the globes will be in here too. And there we go. So this would have been part of a pair. It's sort of like a Art Deco style early uh, plastic base, you know, probably 40s, somewhere in that time frame, maybe 50s. I think somebody's put a newer plug on at some point. This looks like it would have been uh, a replaced plug for maybe the 1960s or 70s, but the, the lamp itself is a little older than that. But cool piece, would have sat, you know, on a nightstand. Now this box appears to be camera gear and some cameras. This case was empty, Cam empty camera bag. Some flash bulbs. These things we get red hot. Technology sure has changed. You basically just get the one shot with that, and you'd, that was it. If you want to use flash, you got to have a whole handful of these things. Um, sometimes they would eject, and uh, you get a flaming hot 
flash bulbs shoot right at your face. Kind of a scary thing. <laughs> oh, here's a little uh, little brownie, it looks like. Or a little Kodak. Nice that it has the box. Reflex 20 is what that is. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, there are... Yeah, there we go. Brownie reflex. There's the instructions for it right there. Um, so there's probably going to be a flash tube or flash accessories that go with these. Kodak Duoflex. This has the viewfinder that you look in down through the bottom. You can kind of see like that. And you look through the top here and line it up. So that would be taking a picture of that. So you look down and say cheese and snap your picture. Early Polaroid camera, probably from the 80s. Polaroid made sort of a comeback. There's all sorts of young, well, I say young hipster people, but hipster people are getting older now too, uh, that were snapping shots with Polaroids. Sean, did you ever get into Polaroid pictures? I've got a couple myself. Okay, yeah. so a camera like that is kind of cool. Yeah, 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 that's, it folds up. Yeah. It? yeah, yeah, it's neat. And instructions for a Yashica Lynx, which I don't see in here. Hopefully that means that it's going to be one of these other boxes. I'll keep this aside just in case we come across it. And I'm try trying to price things as I go, and I'm going to leave this mess sadly for Sean to put away. Oh, see, there's the flash tube right there. These look like, this looks like it's the accessories. You know what, though? The, the tin that this stuff is in is, is pretty cool, too. That's a nice early Nabob tea tin. It'll probably look good up on my shelf with my other tins up top there. Another camera, Honeywell. Oh no, that's a flash unit. Light meter. And, oh, interesting. Okay, maybe that's the box for the flash unit. Cool. Okay. I was wrong. Flash bulbs, that's okay. That isn't the flash unit for this. This is a Codalite midget flash holder. This box is for a uh, Kobold F. That guy right there. And I open up the case and that's what's in here. So that is the flash that goes in that box. So it's nice to get, keep things together with uh, the proper sort of setup. And I just had to pick this up. Um, you can kind of see, well, this egg is marked for the Centennial, 1867 to 1967 with the Centennial marker on it. But these are all Ukrainian Easter eggs. Of course, a tradition going back hundreds of years uh, where I am in Edmonton, there's a lot of Ukrainian people. I'm part Ukrainian myself. And so painting Easter eggs at Easter time is a tradition. The art of decorating an Easter egg or pusaka goes back many years. In fact, it could reach back to early pre-Christian times when Eastern Europeans worshiped a sun god. This Easter egg dates back to the 1400s and is one of the oldest known surviving examples. Now, the egg represents the coming of spring and the turning of the seasons and many families carry on this tradition today. In fact, the world's largest Easter egg, or pisaka, is located in Vegreville, Alberta, only an hour's drive from my house. And yes, a lot of small towns have giant things. We've got a big egg. These are particularly well done and very finely detailed. As they're kind of fragile, you have to be careful, but that's a nice little box set in what would be considered like a tramp art or um, uh, hand-carved little box, probably made specifically just for those eggs. I love random unusual stuff like that. And with having a strong Ukrainian and Russian population in our area, I should be able to sell these no problem. This little copper tin. Uh, people use these for putting logs in by their fireplace, or I don't think you'd want to wash with it anymore. I, who knows, maybe it's waterproof. It's neat. It's got the uh, original top for it. But what was inside of it is something you don't see every day. This is Jarts. Um, the Jarts missile game. So it's basically lawn darts is what it is. Now, I can't technically sell these things because, um, well, you know, people had a tendency to get them stuck in the top of their noggin. But uh, barring that, it's kind of a cool, fun thing. We'll probably put it on display just because it's an oddity that you just don't see every day. Um, yeah. Toss like horseshoes, they stand in the ground, yeah. Just don't get too close to uh, your friends. I mean, what, what, a, what a game to play. A lot of kids obviously got injured playing it because they were just, you know, not doing it right and ruined it for the rest of us. Now, none of us, including Sean or myself, can throw spikes in the air and run out of the way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Another, not that I need more milk bottles. That's Northern Alberta Dairy Pool. For quick desserts, use new made delicious ice cream. Um, the only milk bottles I'll buy are the ones that have this sort of um, embossed 
writing or pictures on them, those are the ones that collectors generally look for, or if they have the name sort of etched or carved into the glass. Um, here we go. This is kind of neat. Mukluk Mardi Gras, Edmonton Jaycees. This was something that they did um, sort of as a winter festival, and they don't do it anymore. But I imagine this was um, set up so you could sew that on the back of your jacket. That's a really big patch. It's probably about a foot and a half tall, like a foot and a half square. That's a big piece to have, you know, stuck on your clothing. But unusual part of our Alberta history. Um, got this little amplifier here too. This is a tube amp. It's meant to run microphones and you can hook it up to phono, bass, whatever. But the, the neat thing about these, um, well, it's Northern Electric. It's in really good shape and it does have the, uh, the ports and attachments on the side there so you can hook up uh, all sorts of different things like microphones or um, a phonograph, like a record player. And because it's tube, people can use these to power speakers to give yourself a tube amplified speaker for a guitar or whatever else you might want to use. So there's a lot of good um, uses for something like that and collectors will look for it. Tubes are really hot, literally, but I mean, people actually are actively out buying them right now. So didn't want to leave that behind. This of course is a stool. It's specifically a piano stool. Now they had it set up with a vanity and they didn't want to separate it. And I said, well, this isn't a vanity stool. This is for a piano. Um, and so based on that, they were willing to sell it to me because it wasn't meant for a vanity. But the reason I wanted it, of course, nice, beautiful, original uh, finish, with good patina on it, good condition, a little bit of oiling that'll come right back up. But this is a nicer early model that has the claw feet, sort of like the uh, eagle claw holding a glass ball. And that is a style that's much desired for people who are uh, pairing it with a nice antique piano. Or if you want that look, that is your classic piano stool. Uh, nice piece, probably retail on that, about 275 or so. Um, beautiful item, and hopefully that should sell well at the shop here. Now, old suitcases can be fun, and this one's got some good weight to it. We're going to open it up and go through. Okay, newspapers. I don't normally buy papers, but look at this. President Kennedy's death, November 22nd, 63. So those must all be uh, papers from when Kennedy was assassinated. Um, maybe I'll get some scissors from you, Sean, and we'll open this up and see what this looks like. Well, Sean is cutting that open and uh, opening it up. It looks like they've got it pretty well protected. Uh, there's some books in here. So Ian Fleming, not only did he write uh, some fabulous spy novels, also wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And here's a few records. What's odd about these, okay, Partridge Family, uh, Elton John, and Elvis Presley, the blue record, where it's actually blue vinyl, limited edition at that time. Um, if you notice, these have never been opened. These are all brand new. These are factory sealed. And when you have a factory seal record from back then, it adds a lot to the value. So even though, I mean, this is from 74, um, these are all 1970s albums. Um, it's not like an original first press Beatles or anything like that, but um, sealed is good. Um, so we'll have to look those up and see what they go for. All right. So they were just wrapping these up and keeping them safe, it looks like? Looks like it, yeah. Okay. More than one paper? Yeah, it looks like two or three. Okay. Well, that, three. Let's see if we can open one up and yeah. see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Edmonton Journal. It's our local paper. 1963. President Kennedy killed in ambush. I think they're all Edmonton Journal huh. there. You don't hear about that too much. Two police killed in Dallas, too. Secret Service agent and Dallas policeman were shot and killed Friday, some distance from the area where President Kennedy was assassinated. No other information available. You don't hear much about that. I wonder what was happening where there was two police officers shot that same day. And then we've got another journal suspect charge. So this is the whole story. And then, of course, you know, bidding farewell. President Kennedy. So nice little set. I mean, not nice for its subject matter, but nice in terms of its historical significance. Would have been better if it was a Dallas paper because that's from where it happened. But um, yeah, neat little collection there. Okay, layer number two. Okay, well, I'm going to get this out of here. That's actually a little knife that would go on the end of a pocket watch. So you would attach this to your watch and at the other end of it, you'd have this nice little... Uh, Mother of Pearl knife. That's fun. 
Um, oh, look. Should take this to the kid's school. And they can just, you know, instant upgrade at their desk. They can put this right on there. When they send you to the principal's office, they just have to carry that around. Say, look, I'm already at the principal's office. Um, this was uh, the Black Friday paper. This is from Edmonton, 1987, uh, talking about how the... We had a big tornado go through here. And they had a big tornado just go through the uh, uh, Nashville not that long ago, too. But uh, we had one come through here in the 80s. And yes, it created a lot of damage. And it, you know, went through town and... Uh, this was sort of a little commemorative magazine that the uh, the Edmonton Sun put out just so people could buy and I guess have a horrible memory of one of the worst things that happened in our town. But there are people that come in actually looking for this exact magazine here in town. So uh, I have to go through my customer list and see if they left me their name. More cameras. Uh, Polaroid land camera. This is a, a folding camera. So it's actually going to fold right out and kind of accordion. It's got a fun style. That's a folding camera too. Uh, what brand is this? Sport. Uh, I can't quite make it out. ADOX, ADOX perhaps? Not familiar with that brand too much. There's a lot of camera gear in here. So I'm guessing I was keeping this Yashica manual around. And if I'm not mistaken, there it is right there. So there's the camera that goes with that manual. Nice to have them together. And it's a good quality you know, 60s Japanese 35 millimeter, which there's lots of collectors for. There it is right there. Nice little lens on there. Looks to be in good condition. Operating nicely and uh, has the instructions. I'll have to go through and see what some of these other cameras are too. Okay, that looks like an AGFA. So it's an ISO Rapide. We'll see if it's in there. Hopefully it is. There's been a lot of cameras. I'm kind of just getting them laid out on the counter here as we go through them. So little brownie box camera. I'm starting to put prices on some of this stuff too, just so we can get it out and get it for sale. Oh, look at that. Does, doesn't even look like it's been uh, used really. It's like in brand new condition. Well, that's a nice little display piece. Yeah, yeah registration card has never been sent in. Send it in now. See if you'll get your warranty on it. Well, that's a fun little piece, 1960s. Oh yeah, your classic cat eye glasses. But, you know, even though these are prescription, you could either use them as prescription glasses or go in and get uh, sunglass lenses put in and turn these into a really funky pair of lady sunglasses. Both in really nice shape too. That one's a little bit more ornate than this, but that's a, that's a fun look if you're kind of into that rockabilly scene or, you know, that whole Betty Page kind of era of stuff. That's a really neat pair of glasses. Wow, and she had a strong prescription too, kind of bifocals. You don't need to have a couple pints to get the same effect wearing these things. <laughs> you get pulled over wearing these, first off, they're gonna think you're crazy because you're wearing ladies' cat eye glasses, but you know, then you're gonna be kind of like, can't walk a line or anything. Uh, I think these are best served going to a new home. Speaking of winding things up, this is an oddball piece. Um, any, any guesses what this is? I have no idea. Okay, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> It's a wind-up razor. That's not much of a clue. I just told you what it was. <laughs> Here's a clue. Here's the answer. I think it's a wind-up razor. It's actually kind of working. Um, I'm going to see if this thing works. I'm going to take my life into my hands, crank this sucker up. Okay, this may be one of the more stupid things that I'm going to attempt to do today. But this uh, vintage Thorns Riviera, um, let's see what this does. Ow. Oh, it's kind of working. I can hear it kind of going there. I probably am going to catch uh, at least 10 or 12 1950s diseases that they thought were gone. I don't know how close of a shave you get, but it's actually working. Now I feel like I just got to shave my whole face, but yeah, that sucker actually works. A wind-up razor. Never seen one before. Apparently the thing works. Here's a nice little lady's cocktail size watch. It's made by a company called Abra. But oftentimes these are um, actual little emeralds and diamond flakes in there, giving you a nice little sparkle. Sadly, some of the, the diamonds and stones have been lost along the way, it looks like. There's several of the stones that are missing. But um, this would have been a good quality watch back in the 20s, which is where I'm going to kind of guess that's from. And it's even nicer yet that it has the original case it came in. So we'll get that out on display. We'll wind it up and make sure it works all right. Oop, put that one down. That's kind of a funny looking guy there, isn't it? 
Looks like a gendarme, like a, a French policeman almost with that type of hat on. But um, yeah, it's like an, an Ivorex, like a faux ivory sort of look. This is like a little miniature samurai sword uh, letter opener. Made in Japan. It even looks like it has the look of a folded steel blade. Um, yeah, so open your letters in style like a samurai would when they get their mail. They open their letters with samurai swords, little tiny ones, I'm sure. Um, and then the other one that was kind of cool, this is a nice early Parker um, pen. And it's got the uh, the quill at the end there. You know, you can still buy ink and refill these and get them cleaned up. And there's tons of collectors for pens. We always seem to find come across pens. Oh, look, shaving stuff. Well, this is what would have gone in here. That's a uh, shaving cup. So you get it all soapy and you kind of rest it in there while you're shaving. Um, there's, oh, look, a straight razor. That looks like what it is. And the box was in bad shape and they fixed it with a an old box of something, pollens, maybe like a cigarette case. Hopefully the razor's not all chipped up because these things, uh, they're not much good if they're damaged. Oh no, King Cutter, it's actually in really good shape. That's a very nice blade. That could be like a, uh, you know, like a $40 blade right there. It's in perfect condition. Just give it a bit of a sharpening. And look, you can do that right here. There's the strop to take some of the burrs off. But that's a good piece. What else is in here? Clippers. Uh, if you want, give you a little... Pull them out one by one. <laughs> yeah, well, I might do that. I'm sure uh, there's many people out there cringing at the sight of this. Some people might swear by it, though. Oh, look, there's more straight razors in here. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole, I didn't even know that's really cool. Okay, we'll, we'll have a look at those in a second. There's the sharpening stone right there. And another Gillette adjustable, which is nice. These are good when they're adjustables. It's not what they call a fat boy. Um, fat boy is a little bit shorter than this. The slim is probably what this is. That, you know, fat boy slim was a, you know, a band. Um, but this is, uh, there's a fat boy and this is a slim. This is probably the slim version. Uh, very good razor. Um, excellent quality. And what's this guy? Looks like they've not showed a little case for it. This little box has... Oh, custom made or a little Gillette box. And this is, I think, what they call a black beauty. And it's um, a little bit better on the scale of uh, razors and fairly desirable. It is adjustable with a long handle. Um, that is one that people definitely look for. I don't know if this case is original to it, but if it's not, I mean, it does say Gillette and it does fit in there really nice other than this, you know, I can't imagine them selling it with the handle sticking out the back, but maybe somebody's adapted it to fit. But either way, that's a cool little razor right there. Okay, well, keep all the shaving stuff together and the pens together for now. Price and put those out when I get back in on Tuesday. Um, yeah, I'll try not to leave you too much of a mess here, Sean. <laughs> Last but not least, there's a box, some newspaper comics. Uh, some strike signs. I guess you never know when you're going to need them again, so they probably kept them around. C-U-P-E. Local. And a box of comics. That one's a little bit newer, but some of these I can tell are definitely older. I might have to bring these home to look through because there's a whole bunch of them in there. And this would have been a crossing guard. This AMA is the Alberta Motor Association. In, in the U.S., you would have... Uh, Let's see, would it be AAA, American Automotive, and uh, AA in the UK? But some youngster would have worn that when they were doing school patrol, making sure kids got across the street safe and sound, and it's in just fantastic shape. And you might think I'm crazy having a really heavy safe on top of my glass counter, but it's actually one that somebody's custom made out of wood with a little tray. They built their own safe. Uh, but they went to all the efforts to put a real working latch on it with the key. And I think that's just a fun thing that either like a, a youngster might want that in their room or somebody might have a use for it down the road for something. Fun decor piece. They did a really nice job doing a little bit of the stenciling like they would have on a real safe. Well, kind of a fun item. Why not? I was emptying out the box of comic books that brought them home to do this. And there's a lot of Archie comics, which is no surprise. Archie was a really popular series. In fact, Archie was so popular that there was a lot of knockoffs like Swing with Scooter and uh, Go Go and Animal. And the funny thing is some of the plot points are almost really identical. Look, there's a blonde girl, there's a brunette girl. 
There is a really big guy who they call Animal, who's basically like a moose from Archie Comics sort of character. And even the, the drawings look really, really similar to that Archie style. So there's a few of these uh, kind of, I want to call them knockoff Archie comics. And Archies aren't, and typically they're not really worth a whole lot, unless you get some of the early, early ones from the 40s and 50s. These kind of comics in that condition, they're pretty much just good for reading, which is exactly what's happening right next to me. What are you reading right now, Abigail? You got to show us the cover. Rocky Witch. Yeah, is it pretty good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, okay. So Abigail is testing out the products here as we go through. There were a couple um, that were a little bit more interesting. There's some of the old um, classic juniors, which are kind of cool. Um, there's old Delcom or Gold Key, I should say, and they had some really interesting covers. They would do um, uh, TV shows and stuff too. So you'd have like Flipper, there's Flintstones, there's Jetsons, Lone Ranger, and some of these can be a little bit more collectible than your average uh, kind of Archie comic because they have um, syndicated uh, content. So they have uh, actual licensed products and content. Now, what I was hoping for would be to find a lot of early Spider-Man or Superman from this time frame uh, or Batman that had key issues in them. And there wasn't really a whole lot. There was maybe four comic books, poor condition. There's a Batman. In 12 cent, that'd be like 1960s. That'd be considered uh, Silver Age. But this is not a bad one. This is a Detective Comics, 12 cent, and that's the introduction of Batgirl. So this is the very first time she's been released. So this would be considered a key issue because they've introduced a character for the first time. But uh, although the spine isn't that bad, it's got some pretty bad wrinkles in it, and that's going to really reduce its value. We've got some Teen Titans, and look, their, their biggest worries they had, oh no, what are teenagers afraid of? They're afraid of Mad Mod, so somebody who dressed in mod clothing and was giant. He doesn't look evil, he just looks like he's fashionable and really, really big. But they look like they're really upset by it. Uh, different problems in the 1960s than what they have now. And some of the old sci-fi covers like this on Unexpected, that's a 10 cent issue, dated to 1961, look at this. I've converted you to pure energy, Space Ranger. Now when I pull this lever, you'll be scattered into space in a million directions. And look, he's like, that's fine. He's like, whatever. He's like, I already lost the keys to my car this morning. This might as well happen. And um, yeah, the amazing Dr. Electro, who looks like he's part octopus alien, but yet he's wearing pants. So that's good. He's bashful. Um, so that's kind of a fun cover. Now, again, condition not great, but that in a picture frame might look kind of cool too. And Jason has joined us, and he's also now partaking in... What What are you reading? Uh, an Archie comic. Okay, you got to hold it up so I can see. Yeah, he's reading an Archie and me. So we'll let the kids have fun going through some of these, but um, some that are a bit more collectible I'll bring back to the shop, and uh, we'll get this stuff out and for sale. You can kind of see how a kid was growing up, too. They started with, like, Tom and Jerry and Disney, and then they got into Archie comics, and then later there's, you know, some Batman... And then finally, by the time you get to the early 70s, probably when they're teenagers, you get into Mad Magazines. Now, some of these are definitely, you know, more on the political side. Nixon slipped here. Um, famous, of course, they've got the little fold-in in the back. If you're not familiar with the Mad Fold-in, it's a picture like this. A bunch of people doing stuff. And this has been folded in, so I'm going to do it already. It doesn't do any extra damage. Um, when you fold it in, it turns into a different scene. So uh, somebody's getting, people are getting murdered. Uh, crime techniques via television. So I see it's a TV set and people are getting killed on TV. Well, I guess that's maybe their commentary about something, but uh, maybe about violence on TV at the time. Um, so, yeah, the fold ins. Uh, I don't know if they do them on Mad Comics nowadays, but there's some uh, interesting little comics and fun little features in here that. Um, some people do collect these. Mad Comics, again, are not overly valuable. Like, the very best piece that I got from this whole collection is going to be the uh, first appearance of Batgirl. If that, was, if that was Mint, that's quite a valuable comic. In that condition, it's not worth as much. But still, that's a, that's a good comic. I'm glad that I got at least one good one out of this pile. And the kids have got some stuff to read. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get this all packed up and get it ready to take back to the store. Nostalgia Illustrated. I remember when I used to be into Nostalgia. Okay, so that's it. Everything is out at the store. Um, total, I think I'm going to have an opportunity to make about three, four hundred dollars profit off of everything I got there. The comic was a really good find. That'll help offset the sale. The piano stool already sold. So things are looking up. So thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.